Hi friends, it's Lisa and I'm back with this awesome fun Splosion window box card video. I had a bunch of leftover ice creams from my last video. If you haven't seen, it's all about liquid watercolor. Go check it out. Here are the ink colors I'm going to use for this first part. It was really inspired by this Amy Tangerine acetate. It's confetti acetate. So that's where I picked these colors from. So I'm going to do a smooshing technique. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull. So the Amy Tangerine acetate is inside a little plastic bag. I'm going to cut the bag down and use that to do the smooshing. So you'll see that here. I'm cutting it out, make it a little bit more manageable. I bought three of these Amy Tangerine confetti acetate 12 by 12 sheets and this is the first one I've used just because I haven't had a project that goes very well with them yet but I have so many things I want to do with them I'm gonna to have to buy like 12 more it's just that simple so <laughs> Because I'm all about using my stash, but I also want to have really good products when I want to use them. So, here I'm adding the three Distress Ink colors, which was Mode Lawn, Worn Lipstick, and Squeezed Lemonade. Then I'm going to add the two Distress Oxide colors here in a minute, and we'll see that. But I'm going to go ahead and heat these up with my heat tool just to dry them down. I don't want a whole lot of blending because there's so many different colors and they're all across the rainbow. If I get a bunch of mixing, I'm going to get brown. So that's why I didn't mix them too much. And I'm focusing on just layering it up. So we have Wilted Violet and Broken China, I think think is the blue. So at this point it looks like a hot mess. <laughs> I almost gave up but I decided to continue going. I added some of the faux bleach technique where I sprinkled some water, let it sit for about 30 seconds and picked it up because I figured more texture couldn't be bad. Then I'm taking this background stamp from Dark Room Door and I'm going to heat emboss that just all over in a couple different colors. And I'm not doing full a full pull down of it, full stamping of it, just sections. So I get kind of a ethereal backgroundy look rather than rather than the full picture because I'm doing this big 9 by 12 Sides of paper, the background obviously doesn't cover that, so just using little bits of it kind of gives it a more distressed look. I really liked how this turned out. There is one step I would say that if you're going to do this exact same thing exactly the way I did it, there would be one thing I would change. I end up using the blue tinsel, blue tinsel embossing powder from Ranger. The tinsel part of it, the glitter, comes out a lot. So when I went to ink blend over, so I could fill in some of those white areas, it picked up all of that glitter and got it all over one of my ink pads. It was a pain. I'm not exactly sure how to clean it off. I'm hoping it doesn't affect anything. So <laughs> One thing to note, if you're using something like that, don't ink blend over it. Anyway, I'm going ahead and using the silver now, and I sped it up a bunch through these last couple of embossing folders just because it took a while. <laughs> I didn't think you wanted to sit here that long. I am using a, a anti-static powder tool, Versamark clear ink, and a stamp that I'm then you pour the embossing powder over and heat it up with the heat gun. And that's what gives you the embossed resist technique. It ended up really pretty. <laughs> I literally almost gave up when 
I finished doing the ink smooshing, I was like, oh my gosh, this looks terrible. But I kept going. Even here, I was like, oh, I don't know. It was looking better, but still. Adding the blending was necessary. It definitely finished off the, the paper in the picture I was trying to get to. And using only one or two, see, I got the blue all over. So I started using my rag and just changing it every time I went to ink it up. So, then I tried to uh, pull the, color, the sparkles off. It kind of worked. So, I only used two or three of these colors to actually blend over top. And it gave it more of an overall tone. You can see that. It's a kind of cooler, purpley tone because I used the pink, purple, and blue. And so it just becomes more of that shades. So here I'm cleaning up and we're about done. Oh, I forgot. I did decide to use this, the glitter dust iridescent glitter to go over top. I have this 12 by 12 plastic box that I got from Michaels for $3 that I use when I want to spray. So I'm spraying, spraying, spraying. And my window's open, so don't do this in a closed room. You need well-ventilated area. I would suggest going outside because it stank for a little bit. But I do have a box that is specifically for any sprays. And that's what I use it for. So I'm using my brayer to push this down onto my Cricut Standard Grip Mat. And... I'm going to wipe away some of the glitter and just stuff on top before I put it in my machine. I don't want any of that glitter getting up in the machine and junking it all up. I don't use a whole lot of glitter just because it's such a pain. It gets everywhere. All, just You end up with glitter all over yourself. So, I will show you... Oh, I did not capture this part, the part from my computer. I forgot to video it. But it's just the Anna Griffin window box die cartridge. And all I'm doing is cutting out the window box and three little tabbies that go inside. So, I really like Anna Griffin's stuff. But her style's not exactly my style. If you've seen any of her stuff, you can look at this picture and say, obviously, not the same style. <laughs> so I like to be able to use her stuff in a way that really fits me. So I had wanted to get the dies for the window box because she actually has a die set that, that'll that cut this out. You can use your die cutting machine and cut it out and it works great. I'm sure I don't have one, but it, because it's it was like $70, and I just didn't have the money for that. So, but this die cartridge came out, and it cost $20, much more up my alley, and I don't, I can do a lot more things with it. So, I'm putting these other Anna Griffin dies, which are actual wafer-thin dies, through my Gemini, and cutting out some little whirly gigs or flourishes. I think they're flourishes. But you can see that they didn't cut through with just the regular plate. So I went ahead and added uh, the metal shim. And this is the first, no, maybe the third time I've used the metal shim for the big plates. Maybe the first. And you'll see it makes it bow up real bad. So I put the all the plates without any of the dies back through once. It did flatten it out a little bit and when I use that metal plate next time I'll just turn it over and won't have as many issues. So one thing if I hadn't have messed it up the first time not cut full through fully I would have gotten perfect die cuts 
but since these are just part of it, you, you don't really notice that some of the edges are a little flat if you've ever had that issue. Here I'm trying to decide if I want it to be white on the outside and to pop up with a bunch of color or the opposite. I had I had all my ice creams. These are stamps from Avery L that I watercolored with liquid watercolor. You can see how I did that in the last video. So if you're interested, go and check it out. But I die cut them with my skin and cut. Yes, I have two electric die cutting machines, but I use them both. I I cut it out because I thought I wanted it to look more like a sticker. But you'll see here in a minute that I changed my mind. First, though, I had run out of dry adhesive that would be strong enough to hold this together. So I'm using the Distress Collage Medium in the mat, and it's going to hold the card together beautifully. I might actually suggest, if you're doing a project like this, actually using... A glue like this because it will actually hold your project together some of the dry glue just won't hold it as well so I am putting some blocks on there to get it to dry correctly I put a ton of of the little whirly gigs and the ice cream onto the top of this card so using the distress collage medium really helped. Now you'll see that I did a backwards S shape. You don't, apparently, for some reason, you don't want to have the two little flappies facing the same way. So you want one going towards you and one going away from you. That's just what the instructions tell you. So that's what I'm trying to tell you too. I am reinforcing all the folds with my Teflon Bold Folder. This just breaks the fibers and allows the card to really pop open. Now I'm going to plan out where exactly I want all these whirly gigs and I glue them a couple at a time just because when you put the glue on and it's not dry, if you hit it with another one, it will pop off. So I glue, I think, three, and then I go back and glue three more. Then I go back and glue a couple more. So, I don't think I show you all of that. But what I did do is, this is a little tool that I like to use. And it, I think it's for gel press stuff where you can make textures into the gel press but it's basically a plastic paintbrush with one bristle <laughs> just the one bristle so I use it for putting glue on because you don't waste a whole brush every time you put glue wet glue on I do use quite a bit of the glue because I really wanted these to stand up. It's a pop-up interactive card. So having weak adhesive is going to give you a lame card. That's just something I was like, I need this to be an awesome card. And that's what I wanted. And that's what I got. It's an awesome card. I'm super excited. But you can see, I do take my time. I'm very careful. And it ends up being pretty cool. So if you're interested in doing this again, oh, that's what I was going to tell you. I use these whirly gigs. Some of the, a lot of the other explosion cards that I've seen use clear acetate and they just cut strips, which works great. But I, using this Annie Tangerine confetti die seemed to be the perfect way to get a fun explosion card. I wanted to add so much fun and excitement into this one. You'll see here I stop at three and I wait for these to dry. That I die cut this, uh, the acetate and created a really cool look. You'll see at the end I did take some pictures 
once I got all the acetate in before I put the the ice cream in so that's really cool you'll see that here you can see that I use the Friday font and I'm just moving all the letters getting everything in line then I'm gonna weld everything together I go two letters at a time I add one letter then I take those two letters and add the next letter as I weld it because then you get a better result but here I'm trying to figure out how to space the letters. If I did this again, I would have cut it out of black mirror cardstock and it would have looked really cool and that would have been the end of it. I would have just had to glue it on the card, but you live and you learn. So at the end I make it, if you have a maker or a Cricut accessory, you'll know how to do this. If not, I have some other videos about it, but that's really, this video is already long, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move on. You'll see here I have all of the little whirly gigs glued on, and they're looking really cool. It looks like a sea creature is exploding from the box, so I think that's definitely something I'll have to do, is get some little fish stamps and have them in their little tentacles oh my gosh that would be too cute for words but I wanted to say you can do this with just blank clear acetate but and but use your Copic or alcohol markers and color on them and you could get really cool results instead of having it be something that you're trying to hide like use it to make something even more awesome <laughs> <laughs> really what I did so you can see here I was going for the sticker effect and with my original plan in mind which is a little bit more subdued the sticker effect would have been great and I would have shown you how I used my scan and cut to cut those out but I once I realized how many I could fit on if I cut it down plus the white didn't really go with the background and the fun die cuts. So cutting them all down really made it more cohesive. I'm also going ahead and cutting the sides because I'm not quite as good as an electronic die cutting machine and it makes it so it makes the die cuts look a little bit better. I picked, there were a few of the little ice creams that I didn't use from my last video and that's just because they didn't really go with the very vibrant theme of this but although I did add a ton I don't know if I honestly could have fit anymore there were a few that I didn't even add because I didn't have space for them I think you could easily make two cards with the amount of little ice creams I had I ended up with I think 20 ice creams so there were a few places where I had too much of the matte medium and it spilled out just a little bit. I tried to clean that up, but where I didn't quite get it because I didn't want to knock the die cut off, it actually dried clear and you can't see it at all. So, I put a couple on, I let it dry, put a couple more on, let it dry, put a couple more on, let it dry. Because if you put them all on, they're going to fall off. Oh, here's where I'm actually going to cut out the fun explosion card. I'm not sure exactly why I show you it so soon, but here I'm going to actually cut out the words. So I cut out the words in the same manner I did the box. So I didn't want to show you that again. I didn't think you'd care. But I'm going to go ahead and try and do this technique where you create your own embellishments. So I'm going to heat emboss these, but I'm using the blue tinsel embossing powder which I've kind of decided this isn't my favorite I don't plan to get on get any more tinsel I'm just not a glitter person it's just not my thing I always think I am but I'm not so I'm heating this up and then I'm going to try and pour some of this embossing powder on fast it turned out okay but it didn't work out perfectly and I think the issue was not the technique it was 
using the tinsel with it, it just didn't work. So I put it through my little Xyron because there was no way I was going to get all the perfect glue where it needed to go. So I am putting it down and I'm starting with the explosion because I decided it would be really cute if it said fun explosion. If I did this again, like I said, I would do black mirror cardstock. I think that would have looked the best and would have shown up. You'll see in a minute that I change to silver glitter, and that doesn't show up great either. So just, you know, think about what you want to do. I end up not having a good way to put this fun part on. I probably should have just moved it over a little bit to the left and put it all on the ice cream, but I didn't, so I kind of do that, and then I end up adding another die cut to finish it off. That, I would say that was the one part of this card that didn't end up super wonderful, but you do what you do, and you work on it. So, here I'm adding the last whirly gig on, it gets a little tiny bit busy right in the front, but with so much going on, the whole card's busy, so it's not a big deal. I do add some glue to hold that in, and I start adding some more die cuts on. These, I one thing I really tried to do with the die cuts is not to put too many similar ones next to each other. I also used the red, white, and blue ones, which were thin, to be on the edges because I thought they looked kind of like rockets and they were the smallest. So if it was an explosion, they would be like flying everywhere. And <laughs> it was a lot of fun creating this card. I was nervous. I'm going to be honest. I've seen some really cool box cards and I was like, oh my gosh. That's going to be horrible. What am I going to do? But I just went ahead and did it. That's my philosophy is on this kind of stuff. Just go ahead and give it a try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you had fun doing it. And I had a lot of fun doing this, and it worked. So <laughs> you can see I did also try to have the ice creams going in an arc. So you'll see that all of the points or the ends point down towards the center bottom so it looks like they're exploding out. I, I'm sure you could do it other ways and it would still look like that but I think that this just really gives it the vision of exploding. Now you can, I don't show you this whole thing because I, to be able to do it, for me, I had to have it sitting this way. And it's hard to, you probably don't care all that much. You're probably even fast forwarding through this section. But because I can't show it very well laying on its side. it I had to leave it upright and let it dry. But we're going to go ahead and... Fast forward a little bit, let this dry, and you'll see after I have finished adding all of the die cuts, I let that dry and then I added a few more. So you can see it is jam-packed full. And I decided that the blue just wasn't working. I probably just should have left it, but <laughs> if you've watched my channel, you know I can't just leave things. So I'm going to use some of that same glue, the Distressed Collage Medium, in a little bottle that I have, which slightly hurts my fingers, <laughs> but I'm going to use that little bottle and color over the whole fun explosion and get some pretty silver glitter on there. So. Well, watch that for a second. Here I go. Easy peasy. It This is sped up four or eight times, so it actually took quite a bit longer than that. And my fingers hurt quite a bit. Trying to get this thick glue through that tiny little nozzle is a little bit difficult. But it's such a good glue that when I use liquid glue, this is the glue I go for. 
because you know when you put it down it is going to stick so one thing about the glitter is obviously the liquid glue dries slower so you have to let it dry I didn't do anything with this card I just put the glitter on shook it off let it dry and then I shook some more off I had planned to add some sequins and stuff like that but I forgot by the time I got got this dry and ready to go I it wasn't even on my mind so definitely something you could do I had some really cute sequins that would have looked perfect with it but oh well probably has enough fun explosion here you can see where I had just the acetate on there. I hadn't added any of the little die cuts and it looks so cute even just like that. I think if you added a few sequins and put a little sentiment, you could, I could have just left it like that. How cute is it? Amazing. And then I do add the die cuts and this is, I get a fun explosive card. <laughs> so thanks so much for joining me. Next week I have some videos on the new Harmony ink pads from Crafters Companions. So join me again and have a great day. Bye!